Hi guys, Ray from Whimsical Pictures here, bringing you part four of my sort of more in-depth uh, shelf tour of my manga collection. Uh, this will be the final two shelves of my more standard-sized manga. Uh, once again, going to be all Japanese language manga. Uh, this is shelves seven and eight. So, yeah. Uh, first of all, we have volumes one through three of... Toma no Shinzo, or The Heart of Thomas, um, by Moto Hagio. This is one of my all-time favorite series. Uh, you can see that, much like some of my other sort of vintage shoujo stuff, I kind of have the uh, original Tonkobon release from the 70s. You can see this is, uh, <laughs> this has been well-loved. It's, uh, and also left in the sun, clearly. But the inside is in perfectly good shape, and the covers are as well, so I was fine with that. Um, I'm going to talk more in-depth about this series when we get to my English book. <laughs> I have it in English as well, uh, when we get to that. And then we also have this one. Visitor and at the lakeside. This is sort of an epilogue volume to The Heart of Thomas. It includes two bonus stories. Uh, the first one, the longest one, is called Visitor and it's about Oscar going more into the complicated family situation he's coming from. And the shorter story at the back is almost like told in a picture book sort of style. Um, like this. And that story is about Eric. Uh, next we have volumes 1 to 14 complete of Nabari no O by Yuki Kamatani. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this series has been released in English. It is out of print. But I just bought these for a really cheap price at Book Off, so that's why I have these ones. You can see the art evolution Kamatani went through in this one. Um, this series is about a boy named Miharu, who at the beginning is sort of this very dispassionate, aloof protagonist, really doesn't want to get involved in anything. Uh, very sarcastic. He's really funny. And he gets sort of suckered, suckered into joining the school's ninjutsu club, which he thinks is a bunch of, like, loser nerds who, you know, want to be Naruto ninjas or whatever. <laughs> but it turns out that they are actual ninjas. Um... And there is a whole secret, hidden world of ninjas that are still alive and active today in the world. And they all want Miharu. He's got this special ninja power hiding within him. Uh, and he is in grave danger. Because everybody wants to kill him and take the power for themselves. So the members of the ninjutsu club... Uh, there's a teacher and a boy and a girl are basically there trying to protect him. Um, and of course, they all have their own circumstances related to what they want from Miharu, but that's the basic premise. We also have this character here named Yoite, uh, who is in sort of an antagonistic relationship with Miharu but wants his power for their own reasons. So, it... The series, I've only read through, actually, this volume, through volume two, so I'm very early in the series so far. But already it definitely has that sensitivity that I think Kamatani writes their characters with, that... I don't know. This is a very bleeding heart. 
very human element um, that you definitely see more pronouncedly, more polished in Our Dreams at Dusk and Shonen Note, but it's really interesting to go back and read an earlier work from them. Next we have Ningyo Oji, or Mermaid Prince, by Kaoru Ozaki. Oop. Like that. Uh, ka Kaoru Janakute. Eh, Kaori. Kaori Ozaki, I think. Uh, she has a couple things out in English. The short series, The Golden Sheep. The one-shot volume, The God's Lie. And out of print, many, many years out of print, uh... Her sci-fi, I guess, sci-fi fantasy series, uh, Immortal Rain, put out by Tokyo Pop many years ago. Um, that was my introduction to her work, and I actually really enjoy that series a lot. We didn't get the whole thing in English, uh, only like seven or eight volumes, but that one's very interesting. Um, this is... These stories all have sort of a light supernatural element to them, but they're definitely more in the vein of The God's Lie or The Golden Sheep. They deal a lot with characters who are outcast in some way, who are searching for some kind of escape. And it'll focus in on just one snapshot from their lives as they're sort of trying to find that escape from reality. Trying to find a brief moment of respite. Um, I think her art is so beautiful. It's so simple, but so gorgeous. The stories are a little hit or miss. But for the most part, I enjoyed the stories in this. I'm trying to show you some artwork. Yeah. Very pretty. So this is one that I'm kind of hoping for an English release of since we have been getting more of her stuff. Next, we have volumes 1 to 8, Caught Up, of... Netaigyo wa yuki ni kogareru, or A Tropical Fish Yearns for Snow. This one is being released in English, um, by Viz, I think. This is a yuri manga about two girls. One of them is a local in this sort of rural town. And one of them is, grew up in Tokyo. So it's sort of her first time in a small town like this. Um... And they are the only two members of their high school's aquarium club, and they have this sort of budding romance between them as they also are struggling with... Uh, one of the characters is a junior, the other is a senior, so figuring out where they want to go with their lives, figuring out who they are, figuring out first love, um, all of that. <laughs> and the special thing about this one and the reason that I have not replaced it with the English version, um, other than that it's a lot of volumes and it would be expensive, uh, is that this series takes place in my prefecture, uh, Ehime Prefecture. It's based on a real high school in this prefecture that does have an aquarium club. Um, the creator... <coughs> whoops. The creator is originally from Ehime as well. So they are drawing on their own experience. And most of the characters speak in the local dialect, uh, which is what everyone around me is speaking all the time. I slip into it for certain words and turns of phrase. And it just is really nice to have a series that has Eoben, my local dialect, like written down in dialogue uh not too common so i get extra joy out of this series i don't think it's going to end with like an explicit confession i think it's going to be a little wishy-washy to the end but 
I think it's well worth reading. Uh, we have volume one of Hai Karasanga Toru. Here comes Miss Modern. Uh, this is a classic series from the 70s. A romantic comedy taking place in the Taisho era, um, which is like the teens to 20s, 1910s to 20s. Um, about this girl, Benio, here, who's sort of a tomboy, and her many <laughs> romantic exploits, uh, specifically related to wanting to marry for love, but having being betrothed to this guy, Shinobu. Um, yeah, it, <laughs> there's, there's a lot that happens. It gets very dramatic, but I enjoy this series, and I may have something related to this to talk about in an upcoming haul. Next we have, I have a lot of series in this, like, last two shelves that I, like, want to go in depth about, so <laughs> bear with me. We have Banana Bread Pudding by Yumiko Oshima, right there. Yumiko Oshima is another prominent member of the Year 24 group. This is maybe her most well-regarded work, one of them. It's, it's a weird one. <laughs> it is about a young woman who uh, how do I say this? It's about a young woman who sees the world in a very unique and eccentric way very dreamlike. She's a very childlike person. Um, and she is desperate to find a gay guy to get into a, like a friendship marriage with because she really wants to be married, but she doesn't want to be married to a man who is able to desire her. Um, and of course, as the book goes on, you learn more, go away, ambulance, <laughs> you learn more, like, her reasoning behind that, and, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, you kind of just have to read it, it's, it's, it's a weird one. Next we have, uh, I'm actually gonna try to read the title this time, what a concept, it, Hyakuoku no Hiru to Sengoku no Yoru. Uh, two volume series here. It is actually the only shonen manga that Motohagyo has ever released. Uh, and it is an adaptation of what I understand is a very well regarded science fiction novel by Ryu Mitsuse Ryu, uh, who is also the sci fi author who wrote the story for Andromeda Stories, which is one of the Keiko Takemiya books we've gotten in English. Uh, these two volumes just came with some other Motohagyo books I was getting, so I didn't necessarily pick them out as ones that I needed, but I have them, and I will read them eventually. <laughs> Next we have The Poe Clan, Poe no Ichizoku, also by Motohagyo, uh, and also the original Tankobon release. I used to have the Bunko Bonds which are these little pocket editions, but I do not <laughs> have the eyesight for that anymore. So <laughs> I have since replaced them uh, with these Tanko Bones. And of course, this series is getting released into English. Uh, hopefully we'll get the second half sooner rather than later. Uh, but I think I will talk about this series more when we get to my English volume of it. But I will talk about the sequel a little bit. So this is the more modern sequel continuation of the Poe Clan. This is the first one called Haru no Yume, Dreams of Spring. This one's called Unicorn. This is volume part one out of what I think is gonna be two of uh, Himitsu no Hanazono, The Secret Garden. I really love this cover here. Um, 
yeah, it just feels like Moto Hagio is taking her extra decades of experience and coming back to one of her most prominent, most famous works as if she never left it, you know? She's just doing as she always did with this series and filling in uh, whatever corner of these immortal vampire children's backstories she happens to be interested in. Uh, there is a pretty fleshed out timeline at this point, so she's mostly going back and filling in what we didn't know before or what we knew but hadn't really seen in action. Um, and yeah, it, it's we also get some chapters that are set in 2016, so we get to see what they're up to more recently. Uh, so I read these very recently, and they were a lot of fun. So next we have more Moto Hagio. Wow! <laughs> but I haven't read this one yet uh, because I'm lazy, and sci-fi is hard. <laughs> this is marginal by Motohagio. It's complete in five volumes. From what I understand, this series is about a uh, civilization far in the future after climate disaster has completely wiped out the female population. So there are only men and boys left and one singular female entity who is kept alive solely to reproduce. So sort of like a, a queen ant or something. Um, and she is referred to as the Holy Mother. And from what I understand, towards the beginning of the series, she is assassinated uh, in secret. And the government is trying desperately to cover up the fact that the Holy Mother has died as they frantically search for any possible way to continue the human species. And the main character here, I should say that one of the more, I guess, darker aspects of this world is, from what I understand, there's a lot of pederasty. Like, relationships between men and boys have become commonplace. Um, and I know that this main character here has sort of a love triangle going on between an older figure and his slave owner. Um, and I'm going to tell you right now, this is Moto Hagio, so he's probably going to end up with the slave owner. <laughs> Not because it's kinky, but because, you know, she, she always got to go with the complicated option. Like, the, the, the fucked up option. <laughs> she, doesn't, she doesn't let her characters be happy. <laughs> If it was anyone else, I would be like, I'm not reading that, but, like, because it's her, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, uh, I want to read this soon, actually. I'm still in kind of a Motohagio mood after finishing those Poe books, so. Next, we have more Year 24. This is the first three volumes of the Ryoko Yamagishi special selection. I like her horror short stories, so this collects a lot of them, so that's why I got these. Um, a lot of them have to do with, like, at least, okay, I've read this one. I've read this one. I haven't read these two yet. Um, this one has stories that deal a lot with generational trauma and the pre-war versus post-war eras and the bubble economy um, the lingering effects of the war and of fascism. Um, so I'm very eager to read more. I know she's really known for her ballet manga, but I haven't really looked into those yet. Almost done. <laughs> uh, my foot is falling asleep here. You're seeing all of my shame on display with these shelves. All the stuff I haven't read. Because I haven't read this one yet either. I think this is Yunagi ni Mae Boku no Ribbon. Uh, it's two volumes complete. It is a Harta comic series. 
And the art, when I saw the covers on Manga Mogura, uh, their Twitter, I it reminded me of Aki Irie, it reminded me of Yuki Kamatani, and also this series is about a boy who's very passionate about rhythmic gymnastics, which was a subject that was interesting to me. So I went and impulsively picked it up. <laughs> I'm sure I'll love it when I get to it, but I haven't gotten to it. Next, we have Yurikuma Arashi, uh, all three volumes, and this is by uh, Akiko Morishima. Um, and what what weird name is he going by in this one? Ikuniko Makinako, it looks like, which is the uh, pseudonym of Kunihiko Ikuhara. The director of the Yurikuma Arashi anime. Uh, he likes to do this thing where he will commission a manga artist to design the characters for his show. And then he will have them create their own work based on his premise. Uh concurrently with his anime and uses that for inspiration as he's creating his own story. So the Revolutionary Girl Utena manga, the Penguin Drum manga, the Sarazanmai manga, and the Yurikuma Arashi manga, they're all very different from their anime counterparts, uh, but based on the same premise and by the character designer. <laughs> um... So it's interesting. It's very much worth reading this one, I think, if you're a fan of the anime, uh, because Akiko Morishima is definitely interested in different things than Ikuhara is. In particular, she's more interested in the adult women characters in Yurikama Arashi, the teacher and the mom. Uh, so if you if that interests you, uh, yeah, I recommend this. It is available in English uh, through Tokyo Pop. And then finally, for my normal size manga, uh, we have by Michinoku Atami. This is Red Barrel ni Sayonara. It's complete in three volumes. Right there. Uh, this is the creator of High School Life of a Fudanshi. And as you can see, this is pretty clearly a vampire series. <laughs> uh, this guy is about ready to give up on life. Uh, he's just been fired from his job again. He doesn't really have any friends. Um, he's just feeling very dejected. And he is walking home distractedly when he, like a, a I don't know, you know, a bunch of construction metal beams or whatever <laughs> fall on top of him. But he is saved at the last second by this gorgeous man right here. But when he looks over to thank him, this man's been completely impaled through the chest. And he's like, why are you still alive? Because he's a vampire, of course. So, basically, in order to thank him for saving his life... Uh, Akira, the blonde boy, starts staying over at this guy's house, or going over to this guy's house to make him meals, because he doesn't cook for himself, and their relationship sort of deepens from there. Um, it's just the art. Look at it. It's gorgeous. It's so beautiful. I love sort of the dynamic of the characters in this one. It's very sweet. The vampire here has had a wife and child before, and he is bisexual, which, as a fellow bi, I always appreciate. And I just, you know what, I'm, I'm a sucker for this Twilight bullshit, you know? <laughs> Especially when you take out all of the weird abuse. <laughs> They're just super sweet and in love and have a good dynamic, so I enjoyed this one. Uh, so yeah, that is my entire 
standard manga volume shelf. So next time we will be moving over to my oversized books. Thank you for watching. See you next time.